Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. VTOL aircraft have given the aeronautical industry greater versatility with their vertical flight capabilities. Although helicopters are the most common aircraft within this classification, others are equally iconic in the military forces. This is the case of the V-22 Osprey. Developed by Bell Helicopter and Boeing for the U.S. military years after the start of the VTOL experimental program in the mid-80s. It has since been used in countless accomplished missions and could have changed the outcome of others that ended badly. For example, Operation Eagle Claw in April 1980 had the objective of rescuing 53 members of the U.S. Embassy in Iran. However, the mission had to be aborted due to mechanical problems with the helicopters. They decided we cannot go on because we don't have enough helicopters to carry everybody that needed to be involved in the operation. Negative results like these have driven aircraft development, such as the Osprey MV-22. Its tilt rotor technology allows it to adapt to different missions, such as serving as support during amphibious operations, especially during launch and recovery operations. It not only has the vertical takeoff capabilities of a helicopter, but once airborne, its propellers can turn 90 degrees converting the Osprey into a more fuel-efficient, higher-speed aircraft like a turboprop aircraft. This versatility allows it to be used in multiple scenarios. In addition, the aircraft can reach speeds of over 275 knots, making it significantly faster than conventional helicopters. What we're able to do that no other platform can is convert from a helicopter to an airplane uh, in mid-flight and then back into a helicopter for landing, allowing us to go to spots that similar uh, type airplanes can't go to. It has a range of over 1,125 nautical miles, allowing it to travel long distances without refueling. These features are accompanied by a defense weapon system that includes several two, such as sensors and a 7.62 millimeter minigun turret. The unique weapon is mounted in the aft cargo bay or the belly of the Osprey. It is operated via remote control inside the aircraft in an interface similar to a video game. The Marines can use it for defensive purposes thanks to its rapid fire capabilities and targeting aid systems. Since its implementation, the V-22 Osprey has been used in multiple operations to transport troops and supplies on missions worldwide. Afghanistan, Haiti, and Iraq are a few examples of locations where this aircraft has deployed or even rescued troops. The 
logistics of these missions flow more easily thanks to the advantages that the Osprey offers. When transporting a group of soldiers or carrying supplies, the ramp and the width of its cargo bay speed up these processes, ensuring that the troops enter in a more organized manner and the cargo can be stored in a more optimized way. Additionally, the aircraft provides alternative solutions to insert and extract personnel when landing is not possible. For this, the V-22 uses an electric hoist system that can lift a rescue basket or a two-man rescue team. It can be equipped with two quick ropes allowing troops to be deployed from the Osprey while still in the air. These capabilities demonstrate the aircraft's flexibility and superiority compared to others. Since its development, this aircraft has been used only by the U.S. Navy and the Japan Ground Self-Defense Force for troop transport, medical evacuation, and cargo delivery. The acquisition of these aircraft by the Asian country was seen as a way to increase their amphibious capabilities, considering Japan's geography in the Pacific Ocean and the great defense ties between this country and the United States. Once purchased, the Ospreys were delivered by a commercial cargo ship in a process assisted by the Marine Corps. This help from the U.S. forces went beyond assistance in delivery logistics. Still, it was also responsible for preparing the Japanese forces with training and joint drills to improve their operations with the V-22. Exercises like Iron Fist combine the ability of Japan and the U.S. to conduct amphibious and land-based contingency operations. Just recently in Iron Fist, we have participated in fire team attacks over range 409 Alpha. And this part, we have gotten first and second platoon from Echo Company to do fast roping out of CH-53s and the MV-22 Ospreys. And this time, I was the fast rope master for the Japanese as they went down the rope. And then it was a little bit different at first, but it's not my first time working with the Japanese, so it'd be able to work, uh, it worked out well. These drills allow Japanese forces to become familiar with the characteristics of the aircraft in different conditions. Due to the versatility of the V-22, the U.S. military forces saw an opportunity to use it in different Marine Corps squadrons. including the Marine Helicopter Squadron 1, or HMX-1. This unit is responsible for the transportation of the President and Vice President of the United States, Heads of State, and other VIPs. This unit must be aware of the presidential entourage at all times, managing complex logistics to transport this type of people. Since it is not only individuals, but also an entire team accompanying these VIPs, including press members,
This is why the Ospreys are a fundamental piece during such critical operations. So, the military forces must ensure that the aircraft is always in perfect condition. Although its capabilities allow it to be used in multiple scenarios and by various units, the V-22 stands out during missions in collaboration with the Navy. During those operations, the aircraft resupply the carrier strike group at sea by flying supplies, parts, equipment, or people to and from the massive aircraft carriers. Its enhanced cargo capacity makes it an essential asset for the Navy, allowing for high-speed, long-range transport to aircraft carriers. This capability significantly improves the Navy's operational logistics, including ships other than carriers. Thanks to the stability in the air given by the tilt rotors, the V-22 can hover over a submarine at sea, allowing crew to lower supplies via the electric hoist to drop them in waterproof containers for retrieval by the submarine's crew. In addition, the aircraft offers the advantage of supplying the submarines from any location. Delivery is usually coordinated in a specific area where the Osprey crew departs from a land base. On the other hand, pilots of the V-22 have greater freedom when moving between ships of different sizes. Since several of its characteristics allow it to land on platforms from aircraft carriers to amphibious assault ships. Apart from its VTOL capabilities, avionics, and advantages given by its rotors, the Osprey can fold its wings and propellers so that it can be operated on smaller ships with limited deck space. Its design allows it to land on various classes of foreign naval vessels. This is why it can operate with allied forces, to support joint missions, training exercises, or logistics operations. However, despite all the benefits that this aircraft has provided, in its beginnings, it had certain problems that stopped the potential that is appreciated today. Initially, the aircraft experienced issues with its complex tilt rotor design, which led to mechanical problems and safety concerns. Further improvements and redesigns were made to solve these problems, focused on increasing the mechanical resistance of certain components in the drive system. There was also a greater focus on training exercises and drills that would allow pilots and troops to be ready for situations related to mechanical problems. This is the case with the hung gear malfunction drill, where Marines simulate an emergency landing scenario to practice the necessary procedures and ensure the safety of the crew and aircraft. Since its development, 
The Osprey has revolutionized military operations by providing greater tactical advantages. Its characteristics have achieved results that previously would not have been possible with different aircraft. Thanks to this, the doors have been opened to new possibilities in the development of aviation. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.